What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down the 2020 Senior Bowl wide receiver versus DB one-on-ones. We're going to talk about a couple things, like most of the things that these receivers did right and a couple things that they did wrong I think they could improve on a little bit. Obviously, they're still young. they still got some time to develop, but overall, a really great showing by the wide receivers in these few examples that I'm going to be showing. Let's watch this thing full speed, then we'll break it down. So this first route is by KJ Hill. I'm sure you've probably seen this before, but maybe not have seen it broken down. So he's going to give this little bit of a hesitation move off the line. He's running a corner. Corner route. So let's watch it full speed. So a little hesitation, jab to the outside, and then stick to the inside, looking back over the middle. That's a Devonte Adams esque route. That that route 100 percent reminds me of Devonte Adams, and this is a perfect example of how we can beat this DB, how we can run a corner against press man coverage, right? So he kind of takes this little hesitation, giving this jab with his back foot to the outside, and now he slides him to the right here. Now the reason why I'm okay with this release, a lot of receivers will do this slide release where they take like two or three slides, and then they try to run this corner route okay that takes way too much time that is way too much time you're not going to be able to get the right timing with the quarterback if you take two to three slides outside you see he takes maybe one little two quick slides so one jab Real quick, real sudden, and he accomplished what he needed to accomplish. This DB is either going to do one thing. He's going to stay disciplined, but he doesn't want to give us this outside and just let us run by him. So he's going to slide with us, right? And we get him to slide with us, he gives up all of this leverage right here to the inside. And all we got to do is just beat this off arm. Now, when he makes this stick off the line, you can see... What's turning? His feet are inside of his frame, but his head and his shoulders are violent, okay? If we can get in that range where... And this DB sliding with us. His feet are sliding, not necessarily moving. He gives up that inside, and I got some room to work, and I'm just making like a crossover in basketball. I stay in this explosive pad level position. I give my head and my shoulders to the outside. That's just going to get him to lean, and you can see we got him to hop. We got his cleats out of the ground. Now let's roll. Now let's work to the inside, okay? So now when he's working to the inside, he's looking back for this ball, selling like he's just running a seam route, right? The quarterback's just going to give it to him running a seam. Now what does that make this DB think? He kicks up into second gear. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to make this play. I'm, I got to go make a play on the ball. I got beat over the top. And then what does he do? Eyes to the inside, violent stick, head and shoulder movement to the inside. You can see his feet are inside of his frame. He's not reaching for anything and he's pushing off the inside arch of his left foot to the corner. And what does that do? That gets this DB to stumble and he's got a lot of separation. It's a great job getting one foot down as well. Okay. So the, I cannot stress enough that slide release, right? It's got to be quick. If we're going to use it in this situation, it's got to be quick. If we're going to give him like two, maybe three, two long slides. I only like it on a slant or maybe a slide, set him up and go vert. But right now he's very quick with it. I wouldn't even consider it a slide. It's just a little bit of a hesitation move. Slide him to the outside, very violent head and shoulders, sudden feet. Then we take the inside, peek back to the quarterback. Let's watch it full speed. So slide, jab to the inside. Let's work in, give him our eyes, sudden stick, get this DB to fall. It's a great job by KJ Hill working this route. Okay, so now this is going to be a great example of how we beat a physical DB, right? Not a lot of room to work. We know there's going to be a jam, right? So let's watch it full speed, and then we'll break it down. So he comes off, and he's being physical. That's what I need to see out of receivers. And you see the separation that he's able to get on this stop route, this little hitch right here, right? So I'm running a hitch against press. Now, from a quarterback perspective... I wouldn't necessarily throw this if I wasn't confident that my guy was a little bit physical and could get off this press because if we get it to him in space, he's going to be hard to break down, right? From a quarterback perspective, pre-snap, I'm looking at that. I'm thinking, okay, if, if he's a real physical guy, I'm going to give him a chance. Like if it was like a Mike Evans guy or, or any res physical receiver, that's who I'm probably going to be looking for on this kind of a route, on a hitch against press. So you see when he comes off, what's he doing? Look at his pad level. It's like he's blocking right now. He's coming straight forward. He's being physical. That's what we need to do. We need to rush these DBs. If we see that they're kind of in this higher base, right, they're not in this real powerful position, their hands are low, right, let's go rush them. Let's, let's, get, let's get physical. Let's just push him back, and then let's take off into this route because what he's doing here is he's just being physical, takes the outside, and it's selling like he's going vertical, right? So he's being physical let's burst up let's get this guy thinking vertical and now he stops on a dime in two steps now you're going to see why this kind of a stop route only works when you take two steps at the top of the break so he's working up one two in and out of this break snapping his eyes around we get in and out of a break in two steps this guy's going to fly by right this guy will fly by he's not going to be able to recover right so he snaps those eyes back around and he gets about four yards of separation that's a great job being physical off the line of scrimmage i say it all the time right here 
is just a mindset. In this situation, it is just 100% a mindset who's going to be more physical, right? There's a couple ways you could do it. You could try to beat him with your feet, or you could just be straight up physical if you're a bigger guy, if you're a physical guy, okay? So using your size to your advantage when you're a much bigger receiver. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So coming out, being very aggressive, right on a dime. Stopping right on a dime, two steps, doesn't take all these chatter steps to the top, okay? So now, he's going to be running a comeback here, and he's going to get him because he sells vertical. We're going to talk about steps at the top of the route, and etc. So let's watch at full speed so he kind of gives this triple move here so one two three to the inside kind of freezes that db works to restack now he goes he snaps down with the right foot he sells vertical it's just he takes a couple extra steps and that's the only thing i can critique on this so you see here he goes one two three now what that's doing here is we're just trying to freeze this db to the inside he's kind of already lined up inside leverage so we know we're going to be able to take an outside release right but our feet right here have to be very quick have to be very sudden because we want to stop his feet and this db could have done a better job of moving his feet right because we see how he got him flat-footed that's how we know we got him and how we get a db flat-footed is by having quick feet right here we got to have quicker feet than the db that's the entire goal that's why quarter or that's why receivers work so many quick feet drills footwork drills etc right so now we got his feet to stop. We could take this outside release. He knows that he got burned off the line, so we got to be a vertical threat 100% of the time on every single route. We got to be a vertical threat. You saw how it even tied in when we were running a hitch. We got to be a vertical threat. So, right, what is he doing? He's being a vertical threat. Now he's working to restack, right? DB's kicked up into second gear because he's running full speed. He's giving his eyes back. Now, one thing I want you to see on this snap down is he doesn't slow down right before the break. He's full speed and he's violent and he snaps down with his right leg. If we're running a comeback or a curl it's that outside break leg so if we're running a comeback it's the leg closest to the quarterback if it's a curl it's the leg closest to the sideline because that's the way we could get in and out of it in three steps if we go with the other leg it's one extra step it's going to be four steps and in this case he did take an extra step but we're going to talk about why so he's running full speed now right when he gets to his depth here how far downfield is this five ten fifteen yards right fifteen yards downfield that's when he's snapping down 15 back to 12 yard comeback right pretty normal play now he's got to be super violent with that leg and how he's able to change direction from being running full speed is by his hips a lot of guys don't understand that a lot of guys will start breaking down right here and their hips cruise into it and they take all these extra steps db's able to recover and then bam we got to be able to run full speed and drop your hips right now so he's running full speed and you can see drops that's a great job chin to his knee dropping his hips that's a great first snap down step right so now the second step you could see isn't pivoting that's why he didn't get in out of it in three steps you see his second step is kind of angled forward that means his hips are angled forward that second step i would like it to pivot out of it. and yes like easy for me to say right from sitting in a chair it's hard to make this break 15 yards downfield right now he gets separation because he sells vertical it's three parts yes i would like to get get in and out of the break and three steps right yes but ultimately he got what done he needed to get done i'm just trying to teach you guys this so we could get a little bit better maybe in and out of it in three steps rather than five right but this is still a great route i'm still not mad at the route it's everything was great except for this one little detail right so his second steps here and you can see his third step is coming straight forward and you can see his hips aren't fully there when my third step comes around i want my hips to kind of already be open so i can just hit that third step and drive vertical and think of how much separation he's going to get 15 yards downfield when it's three steps right again it's just two little extra steps two three and then you see that four five is right here i would like that four and fifth step to be down here already driving me out of the break but you see how far the db works up he's still able to recover here though because imagine if we're in and out of it right now this db ain't recovering until a couple more steps i'm already out of this break right so that's that's just one thing i think this route could improve on just a little bit he takes those extra steps but he's still pumping his arms out of the break that's what we got to have we're going to have a little bit more explosiveness and a little bit more drive if we get off it on that third step and i think he'd be the first one to tell you that that's a great job coming back to the ball and winning that race back to the ball by accelerating off the break just i would like it to be in three steps rather than five steps just cover those two extra steps but still how you get separation on this selling vertical anytime we run a comeback it's against zone coverage got to sell vertical got to step on the db's toes got to get him in a back pedal man coverage i got to push vertical let's watch it full speed one more time so coming off here vertical selling vertical drop one two three one two three four five right he takes that two extra steps okay so now how do we run a slant against a db who is pressed right we can't just run up into this thing because he's going to attack that front hip and make a play on the ball so what does he do kind of gives him this hesitation move to the inside then works a diamond so let's watch it full speed 
So one, two. Oh, no, never mind. Excuse me. This is a fade. My bad. I thought this was a slant. He's going to be working a fade here. So now we're going to talk about how this sets up the diamond release, though, next. My bad. So you see how he comes off here? He kind of gives this little hesitation. One, two, right? So one, two, trying to get this DB's feet to stop. And exactly that's what he did. He's leaning a little bit to the inside, right? If we can get his feet to stop and we're exploding off this release, let's just push vertical, okay? So we just, the whole goal is to get his feet to stop with any kind of hesitation move, any kind of quick quick footwork right so now he's bursting upfield and he's got the separation he needed now you see right here he's still got his head down because he knows this quarterback's gonna be putting it with air receivers you got to tell your quarterback just send me downfield give me some air let me go run it down okay that's how we're going to be able to get focus on getting separation from this guy then we know the ball's right there and the quarterback throws it with air he's got less room to miss right now this quarterback does end up missing throws this thing a little flat throws it back across his shoulder a Tough throw to make, I would have to say. I don't want to be too critiqueful of the quarterback because these are receivers that he doesn't know. But when you have chemistry with your quarterback, you tell him, man, just throw it in the freaking end zone with air. I'll go run it down. I just got to focus on beating this DB. I'll go run this ball down. Let's watch it full speed again. Now, we're going to talk about how this sets up the diamond release here. So you see that one, two. Now he's pushing vertical. Now that DB, he felt that he's going vertical right now. I know this is a different DB, right? I get it. Different DB. I totally understand. But we're going to talk about how that same release, we work this same release right here, then we take it on a diamond. So let's watch this thing full speed. So one, two, one, two, three. Right now that one, two, three is because we're a vertical threat. So he kind of takes this one hesitation move to the inside here. I, I'm... It's kind of a funky release here, kind of trying to get that first step does what it needs to accomplish. It gets this DB kind of backpedaling. Then he gives this jab to the inside here, right, to sell. Like, this DB ain't biting on that jab, but he takes it out three steps, one, two, three here. What that is is when you, you see the last route we just talked about, that hesitation, one, two, bursts up field. Right now, I got to run slant. This DB doesn't want to get beat over the top, right? So I give him that one, two. I attack hard to the outside for three steps. Then I get this DB to overcommit because he doesn't want to get burned, and then I cut right back underneath. Exactly what just happened. I wouldn't be surprised if this guy beat this DB over the top once before. So, again, hesitation move, one, two, three. Now, the one thing I could say here is maybe we could run this thing. Like, you see how his hips are kind of upfield, and he's just taking three steps to the outside? I like to commit these hips, right? That's just going to get this DB to bite more, right? I attack hard outside for three steps, commit my hips, commit my shoulders, and I come back underneath still. That's a great job. The whole goal is to get that DB to open up the gate when we're running the slant, and then there you go. I think this took a little bit too long because of this first move, right? Because it's watching full speed. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Yeah, I want this ball out in just one second if I'm a quarterback. I just want to catch, throw. I don't want to have to sit there and wait, right? So, a little bit long. I think he could have been a little bit quicker with the speed off the line of scrimmage and that initial move and attack the hard, outside hard for three steps rather than being upfield because you see how this DB is still able to recover right here, right? And then if they're going to the ground here, he might be making a play on this ball. If we attack hard three steps outside at a 45-degree angle on this diamond release, that's what's going to get him to open up just a little bit more. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. My bad. I put the wrong clip. So hesitation, one, two, three. Got to commit those shoulders, attack the outside hard at 45 degree angle. So now we're going to talk about another stop route, but why we need to get in and out in two steps. So let's watch it full speed. So again, that same move, a little chatter, and you see how it takes extra steps at the top. And the DB is able to make this play on the ball. Great play by the DB. I, I'm, that's a great job. I'm not taking that away from the DB, but we could have done something better. So again, you see this hesitation move to the inside, right? DB's not biting, but we're still taking this outside release. So what do we got to do? We got to push vertical because there's a few things that we could do here. Now, you see how the last route we ran a diamond release, right? So it's a one, two, one, two, three. And he gives that little bit of a stutter, right? It's to get this guy sitting inside, right? If I get him sitting inside, he doesn't want to get beat on that diamond release again. He's seen this before. Then I'm going to get a little bit more separation. And that's exactly what we do. We get him leaning on this outside leg right there or this right leg just a little bit longer. And I could push up here. Now, when I'm pushing vertical, we got to tie everything together. So I took care of what I needed to take care of at the line of scrimmage. But at the top of the route, I got to get in and out of this thing fast. I still got to finish the play, right? So when he comes up, you see one, two, three, four, and he's out of this thing, right? Rather than snapping down, if he could have snapped down on this left foot and then just go right and turn right out of it, might have gotten some separation here because you see how he's one, two here. DB's able to make a play on it because he takes all these extra steps. And right before the break, you see his pad level start to raise. That's an indicator, right? That's an indicator of breaks coming. I want to keep the same pad level forward and then just drop. I don't want to give any indicators to this DB. So don't peck my pad level up. Don't slow down because when I pick my chest up, I pick my numbers up. It's an indicator of this DB and he's watching my hips. He's looking at my number. He ain't looking 
in my feet, right? So I just got to be real quick with my feet, but I got to keep the same exact pad level. No indicator, and you can see that's why this DB makes a play on this ball again. So let's watch it full speed. That's a way I, the diamond release can set everything up. We work that one, two, we beat him vertical, right? Then we work that one, two, one, two, three, then we come back on a slant, right? So now we work that one, two, a little bit of a stutter here to sell the diamond release, kick up, and then run this hitch, just in and out of the break, least amount of steps possible. That's one thing I could stress. Let's watch it full speed one more time. So hesitation, one, two. And then just got to get in and out of the break, least amount of steps possible. It's one thing I can critique. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you watch this full video, that really means a lot to me. Please leave in the comments any questions you guys have or any comments. I, would really, I will make sure to get back to you. And, guys, if you want to get better at your, improving your football IQ, please check out that link in the description. And I'll see you guys next time.